This episode of Into the Night is brought to you by our loyal listeners and followers. Fazbear Entertainment appreciates your viewership and those who support the show by commenting, sharing, and subscribing. If you wish to support this broadcast, please consider checking out the official merch store and Patreon for more information. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we know it's been so long since Fazbear Entertainment has been back in action. However, the Fazbear family is here again to make a comeback performance to remember, complete with a serenade of music, games, and all the pizza you could ever eat. Introducing the brand new, state-of-the-art, Freddy Fazbear Mega Pizza Plex. A multi-floor indoor amusement venue, complete with arcades, dance halls, go-karting, mini-golfing, and plenty of delicious food and pizza. And don't forget, no party is complete without the iconic Freddy Fazbear Band. Brand new and state-of-the-art, our characters are truly fantasy and fun brought to life in a way you have never seen before. Freddy Fazbear is always ready to dance and sing, and won't ever turn down a game of laser tag at Fazer Blast. Fazer Blast is not included in the standard entry pass purchase. Additional party pass and fees are required. Be sure to get your food quickly, because Chica is chowing down on every single delicious morsel she comes across. In response to her insatiable appetite for our pizza, we have developed the on-demand Fazbear delivery service. Our staff is always ready to take a hot, freshly made pizza directly to you whenever and wherever you are in the pizza place. All our classic characters are ready to party like it's the 80s, and Fazbear Entertainment knows nothing beats the classics. This is why our brand new, incredibly anonymous, leadership team has made a commitment to ensure the sanctity of our brand and make no alterations to our classic lineup of iconic characters. Just ask Roxy the Wolf. As a mechanic, she certainly agrees if something you broke, you don't fix it. Unlike Mongo the Gator, who just prefers everything to be a rowdy rager if he can help it. Whether or not resting in their green rooms or on stage, you can check them both out at Roxy Raceway and Gator Golf, respectively. Be sure to grab a picture of them there! Disclaimer. <laughs> Flash photography is not allowed in Monty's Gator Golf. Any use of Faz cams inside the Monty's Gator Golf attraction will result in aforementioned product being confiscated and returns or refunds allowed. Bring the whole family for a fantastic time. There are exciting attractions inside for children of all ages. But if your child is too young to participate, you have no worries at all. Parents can drop their kids off at our very own superstar daycare. Our state-of-the-art robotic daycare exhibit will ensure that every child's needs are seen and every concern is heard. Sleepover events are no longer available due to safety concerns. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for any form of night terror, panic attacks, night sweats, or any form of psychological damage to you that may or may not have been caused by the attendance of the Superstar Daycare attraction. Never fear what any of your children could have wanted off to. Fazbear Entertainment security and staff are always watching your back. If you have any concerns or need to report any incidents, just reach for any staff bot and the report will immediately be communicated to our security team. In the incidents of any missing children, please be sure to report directly to a human member of our staff for an immediate response. Fazbear Entertainment is not liable for damage to property or persons that occur within the Mega Pizza Plex. So come on down. We have attractions changing and being added all the time. You never know how your personal experience inside will turn out. So join the Fazbear family for your next birthday celebration and make it the best day of your life at the brightest and happiest place on earth. Welcome to the 30 Fazbear Mega Pizza Flex. And your tickets are on sale now. Fazbear Entertainment would also like to reiterate that no official investigation is occurring at any of our establishments. Fazbear Entertainment is not associated with any missing person cases in the past or currently ongoing at, near, or around the Hurricane Utah area. All previous allegations, similar to the false slander Fazbear Entertainment endured during the 80s and 90s, are not true, and no child has ever been endangered or placed in any harmful situation that can be proven in a court of law. There are no risks to the health and safety of patrons of Fazbear Entertainment. There are no costume entertainers here, as we do not use mascot costumes. There are no rabbits in the Mega Pizza Plex. This is episode 26, 
security breach. Pardon the interruption to our loyal guests of Fazbear Entertainment. We unfortunately have to close Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex's doors early due to maintenance. Looks like Glamrock Freddy had some issues on stage, and the current performance will, unfortunately, be postponed until next week. Please gather your children, property, and any other personal belongings before leaving. The Freddy Fazbear Mega Pizza Plex is shutting its doors early. All property left behind will be located, collected, and placed in Lost and Found, where in the following morning, it'll be sold to the highest bidder. We apologize for the inconvenience, and look forward to seeing you all next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Take care now. Bye. Several servos clicked, and the power module within his chest began to hum. His vision was obscured with a red aura blocking his view. Several diagrams circled and triangulated in the corners of his vision, performing calculations and recalculations to ensure that his programming had been altered and that his mechanical body wasn't damaged. The red hue eased into a comforting turquoise. Several blue lines formed and scattered, creating a pattern of empty squares that gradually faded. The words, safe mode, were displayed in the center of his eyesight until his vision was completely restored. Glamrock Freddy awoke in his green room, standing at attention in front of his vanity mirror. He had a shiny and pristine coat made of hard plastic, colored orange-brown, and was shaped like a bipedal bear. The orange-brown bear had a blue rocker face paint encircling his eyes and muzzle, flowing down into a lightning bolt pattern on his chest. His only attire was a top hat on his head, which was tilted to one side. Spiked wrist collars and a bow tie of matching black color were also present on his body. His small green room was decorated with various plushies of his image, and the smell of uneaten pizza radiated from the greasy boxes piled on the table by his visiting guest. Star-shaped balloons hovered in the air, bright orange luminescence emitted from the neon sides of the wall and a professional camera was set up near the door, allowing visitors to get a picture with the leader of the Fazbear Band. While performing on the big stage was always exciting, Freddy's favorite part of the day would be when children and their parents would come by to visit him. The children would always have the biggest smiles when they got to meet him. Freddy couldn't describe it, but those smiles would always bring some level of warmth to his cold metal chest. You could feel a similar warmth in his chest right now. But something was wrong. His internal clock read the time as 11 p.m., a little before closing, but well past the time for shutdown protocols. He seemed to be activated to perform, yet no show would start this late. In an attempt to identify any mistakes, Freddy looked into the mirror. Showtime already? I am experiencing a malfunction. The recharge cycle is not complete. Will you shut up? Who said that? Down where? Okay, listen. You were sleeping, so I opened the stomach hatch and climbed inside. My stomach hatch? That place is reserved for oversized birthday cakes and pinatas. It is not a safe play area. Glamrock Freddy hurriedly turned around and ejected the young children in the stomach hatch, very carefully so as to not harm them. A young boy with brown messy hair and a blue shirt with two white stripes tumbled out onto the ground. Freddy knelt down and gently held the small boy up so they could be at eye level. There you are. Freddy's eyes turned blue and a projection of light swept over the young boy, scanning him from the bottom of his shoes to the top of his hair. Scanning complete. How odd. Your guest profile is unknown to me. Who are you? Freddy put the young boy down lightly. The rough-looking child took a few steps back, 
observing his surroundings like a cornered animal, before giving a response. Uh, I'm Gregory. Gregory. I will notify the main office. Oh, connection error. I cannot connect to the main network. It's her. She cut you off. She's not going to let you call for help until she finds me. Who? Who is looking for you? Your mother? I hear footsteps. Gregory briskly moved towards the front of the room, where a transparent wall was covered by a silk red curtain, like the ones that would cover a movie screen. Gregory pulled the curtain back slightly, invisibly tensed. Freddy tilted his head and leaned on one leg to investigate what Gregory was staring at. A blonde-haired woman in a white work shirt and black pants walked by, clearly investigating the area outside the green room. The words, security, were written boldly in her black cap. That is the security guard. She can help. No, no, I don't trust her. Why not? I don't know who she is, but she's trying to get me. Isn't there some other way for you to communicate with me besides talking so loudly? Ah, take this. It is a novelty Freddy Fast Watch. Freddy's chest opened up again, revealing a small wind-up present inside. Gregory leaned in and wound the music box up to the sound of an ominous jingle. In a flash, the sound of a noisemaker and confetti emitted from the box as the lid jumped into the air. A small square watch was decorated to look like Freddy was stored inside. Gregory gave Freddy a stern look. Perhaps it would have been best to deactivate the gift protocols given the boy's desire to remain hidden. The boy quickly slipped on the watch on his left wrist after looking at the transparent wall in the green room door for a long period of time. What was that? I am sending you an encoded message. Gregory turned his wrist to look at the watch screen. It turned on with a bright blue glimmer. Just as Freddy said, there was a message sent by him in the watch's inbox. Hello, Gregory. It is me, Freddy. I will escort you to the main entrance. However, I am unable to leave this room. You should have no problem. There is a button on the wall that will open the door to the back room. I will make it accessible to you now. Gregory looked up and around the room. And sure enough, there was a button to the back door next to an arcade cabinet in the corner. The button was in the shape of a silhouette of Freddy's head, complete with a top hat and bow tie, so it was pretty hard to notice. The back door was made of metal, with caution colors on the door frame. Gregory hesitantly pressed the button down. The metal secure door reacted by quickly lifting up with an audible chunk. Well done, Gregory. There is an open air vent inside the maintenance room. You will have to climb through the ventilation system and release me from the outside. It, it's pretty dark in there. There is nothing to be scared of. You can do it. Gregory appreciated the words of encouragement, but still would have at least preferred if he at least accompanied him down the hallway. People already aren't trustworthy to begin with, and robots don't gain any more of his confidence. Gregory walked down the small corridor, passing by several consoles and shelves, most of which had a collection of clean solutions and Freddy plush toys. The room's bricked walls were gray and faded, in stark contrast to the bright oranges and blues of the green room. An elevator was on the left side of the wall, as well as a large red cylindrical device tucked away to the side. At the back was a pile of boxes in the corner, leading to an open vent near the ceiling just big enough for someone like Gregory's size to fit through. Gregory scaled the cardboard boxes and began his trek into the vents. As Gregory crawled through the tight space, he noticed small dim lights dotted where corners met, allowing him to see. Most likely, so anybody having to do maintenance didn't have to worry about bopping their heads into anything. Turning a few corners, the vent shaft's muted yellow light gave way to an opaque purple. He began to hear the murmurs of a two-way conversation coming from somewhere down the vent shaft. But as he got closer, the apparent conversation between two people seemed to be a singular one. Your hair is beautiful. Your tail is beautiful. Everyone was watching you. Everyone loves you. Everyone wants to be you. You are the best! 
Thank you. I am the best. I am the best. Gregory moved to a vent covering where the voice and purple light were coming from. As he looked down through the vent slates, he could spy a violet room fashioned similar to Freddy's green room, but decorated with various go-kart parts and racing memorabilia. On the wall, the words Roxanne Wolf was spelled out in neon light. The owner of the name in question was directly below the vent cover. She was a wolf robot with a punk rock aesthetic. Her eyes were bright yellow, while her fur was gray. Her hair, long and silver, had a bright green streak. Her metallic clothing connected to her plastic shell included a red crop top t-shirt printed with black star shapes that exposed her stomach, black earrings, bracelets around the wrist and neck, a spiked belt, red short shorts, and a red shoulder pauldron. Your fans are watching you right now. I know. In response to those words, Gregory took his cue and descended down the vent shaft in a quick and linear fashion. After a few moments, the purple light slowly began to fade, eventually turning green as he continued forward. In his approach to what he believed to be another animatronic green room, literally this time around, he could hear what sounded like a wild bear going berserk in a lockbox. The blast of broken furniture and the crunching of steel could be heard paired with robotic grunts of frustration. As Gregory approached another vent opening, he noticed a neon sign spelling Montgomery Gator emitted a muted green aura. While Gregory heard smashing, the darkness that enveloped the room only gave him glimpses of the hulking shadow hurling objects and snarling in ballistic rage. For a brief moment, he could have swore he saw a pair of small red dots pointed directly at him. Gregory left the room, much faster than the last one. The lights again suddenly shifted, this time from green to pink. The sound of electric guitar riffing could be heard, and as Gregory moved to the end of the vent shaft, he could spot Chick at the Chicken jamming out in her green room. She was white and had blue eyes. Her beak and talons were orange. She had three stray feathers that stuck out from the top of her head. Like the other glam rock animatronics, she was dressed in 1980s era punk rock clothing. Apparently the retro theme was what Phasma Entertainment was going for with the robots this time around. At least Gregory thought that attire was retro. Chica's chest, waist, hip, and shoulder pieces were pink and purple, meant to resemble a sleeved leotard. She wore black spiked braces on each arm, similar to Freddy and Roxanne, as well as a pair of green fingerless gloves. Gregory didn't decide to stick around to observe her. After a few more moments of crawling, he reached the vent opening outside the green rooms a few feet above the ground. He peered out to see if the security guard was still searching outside the green rooms for him. He couldn't spot her, but could see a small tarp below the vent covering, offering a soft landing. He swung his legs over and dropped down, and as he did so, the intercom above buzzed the moment his feet touched the ground, and a voice began speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for visiting, and we hope you enjoyed the show. Freddy and the gang are pretty tired, but they'll be back again next week after a few days of scheduled maintenance. Please make your way to the front of the building, where you will be given novelty glasses, a voucher for one free soda refill, and where you will sign a legal disclaimer releasing us of all liability for anything that might have happened during your visit. Have an awesome night, and we'll see you again soon. As Gregory picked himself up, he found himself in a rock star room. A large room that was on the opposite side of the green rooms of the glam rock band, on the same wall as the vent system he came from. As he started to sculpt through the capricious chamber, passing by several large gold statues of the animatronic band, each one had a unique statue in front of their respected green room, which he was now able to get a better view of through the large glass partitions. Luckily, both Roxy and Chico were busy staring into their vanity mirrors and Monty's glass partition 
but was completely covered by tarps and barricades, so none of them took notice of him. Despite the allure of meeting one of the robots face to face, Rory felt the true attraction in Rockstar Row was the contents outside the green room. The large room with green walls and black glossy tiles was also decorated with several scattered display cases. It was like a museum of Freddy Fazbear's past. Each case contained remnants of Fazbear Entertainment's history. The walls hung faded posters of the Fazbear band from the 80s, back when there was a blue rabbit and a wounded looking fox part of the band. In the middle of the room were rows of security cases. Some contained robotic limbs of varying colors and sizes, as well as states of decay. A few other containers stored props the older robots would have held, such as guitars, microphones, and even a cupcake with buck teeth and eyes. As Gregory slinked around the cases, careful to not make too much noise, he could spot that a few cases had been empty. He didn't think much of it until he saw that one of these cases was smashed open. The hole was clearly visible and the glass fragments were still present on the ground. Strange that no one had come by to clean up. Stranger was why what appeared to be blatant theft wasn't being reported by the security guard. Perhaps she did and somebody was coming soon to clean it up as she continued to search for him. The piece of plex was massive and, as far as Gregory knew, she was the only security guard there. So it would only made sense she would be in a hurry to search the whole facility for him. Gregory frowned. It was a small thought and it probably meant nothing, but he couldn't shake how odd it was for a location as massive as the pizza plex that only one single security guard is in charge of protecting the place. True, there were cameras everywhere, but ever since he was on the run, they never appeared to alert anybody to where he was, so he was doubtful any extra security guards were watching them. How did they manage to guard this place with such limited staff? Given the smashed cases, the answer was likely self-evident. Gregory shook his head, pushing the unnecessary thought to the side. Gregory continued to follow his way to Freddy's green room. All the green rooms, he noticed, had crimson ropes connected to golden stanchions leading to their doors. But he noticed that the red carpet line for Freddy was considerably longer than the other animatronics. Guess it paid to be the face of the brand. As Gregory went up to the door, he looked for a button, a handle, or a sensor, but couldn't spot one. He waved his hands and stepped super close to see if it was automatic, anything to get it to open for him. But Freddy's door wouldn't budge. The stupid door won't open. Gregory looked behind him. At the end of the large corridor, right next to an antique wooden stage with purple curtains and white stars, was a large garage door shutter. If you recalled correctly, the convenience counter was right outside Rockstar Road. Gregory trotted over to the shutter, passing by several small yellow robots tracking Gregory with their gaze as he moved. The small automatons acted as wet floor signs with wheels. Their square bodies had a comical picture of Freddy slipping on their front and backside. Their rectangular heads reminded Gregory of a digital alarm clock. Large circles of light acted as their eyes, and they had silly little circular ears above them. Gregory felt a slight creep up his spine. He never liked the feeling of being watched, and the wet floor bots were no exception. They were uncanny. He lacked any form of expression, but always reacted instantly to his presence, quickly pivoting in his direction and staring at him as he passed by. It felt like walking past an animal he had startled in the wilderness, watching and studying him to gauge if he was a threat or not. He eyed them warily. If Gregory didn't bother them, they wouldn't bother him. At least that's what he hoped, but so far he could never be too certain about this place. Despite being robots, Freddy had been friendly and warm, Roxy had an ego about herself, and Monty had clear anger issues. Who's to say that a sentient wet floor sign on wheels can't be a little temperamental? When Gregory approached the convenience entrance, the shutter door jerk slowly rose once Gregory got close. 
motions and then stopped once it reached about three feet off the ground. Begrudgingly, Gregory knelt down and crawled under the shutter, entering another corridor that had several information desks against the wall. There were several cardboard cutouts of the Glamrock animatronics scattered throughout the lobby. The various attractions inside the Pizzaplex were advertised on the flat screen TVs on the walls. Monty Golf, the Superstar Daycare, and some movie or show that started a cartoon version of Chica as a mermaid under the sea. Ahead of Gregory stood a large stoic Glamrock Freddy cutout. The bear was oddly wearing sci-fi attire for some reason, complete with an astronaut bubble helmet. He had text above him, offering guests a free photo pass with purchase. Gregory didn't have any money, but he also didn't care. He wasn't completely sure what the security guard would do if she caught him, but he wasn't going to let a simple lack of funds or integrity get in the way of his survival instincts. Gregory went up to the board, took a ticket from the small box near it, and left the hallway with a wall side shutter closing behind him. Retracing his steps back to the green room, he walked up to Freddy's door with his ticket visible in his hands. Gregory jumped as without any warning or provocation on his part, the door opened quickly, with Glamrock Freddy waiting expectantly behind it. His hard plastic face made it difficult to tell, but he looked... happy to see Gregory. Way to go, Superstar! I knew you could do it. Taking a few steps out of his green room, Freddy pointed to the backstage door near the shutter wall, a bit closer to that old sage he saw. I know how to get you out of here. Climb back into my chest cavity. There is still time, but we must hurry. If I am spotted, I will certainly be taken back to my room. I will escort you to the main exit through the utility tunnels. It is the safest path. Gregory rubbed the back of his neck. Originally, he hopped inside of Freddy's chest compartment because it was an easy hiding spot. There was enough room and Freddy was deactivated, so he thought he would be safe there. Plus, who would have thought to look for a missing child inside of a robot suit? Gregory nodded hesitantly. Okay, but you better be careful moving around. I don't want to be crushed and twisted into a meat pretzel. Freddy knelt down and his chest cavity once again opened up. Gregory used the bottom part of his exposed stomach hatch as a step to hoist himself inside the machine. Strangely enough, it felt warmer than it used to be. Not burning hot but a general warmth. Perhaps it was heated from where his power source was located. As Gregory shifted into a somewhat more comfortable position inside the machine, Freddy marched towards the exit. Gregory was taken aback by how fast he was moving. Despite his clear weight and size difference to him, Freddy was extremely agile and lucid. He could easily outrun Gregory if they got into a race, and would probably have to slow down to match his walk speed if they were walking beside one another. Once Freddy reached the back room doors, they automatically swung open as soon as Freddy got close to them. Gregory let out a breath of relief. The automatic security system didn't acknowledge him in any way. Looks like as long as he was inside of Freddy's stomach, he was invisible to security. He frowned. It would mean Freddy would have to stick around. Putting his faith in another, especially some random robot, wasn't at all an appealing predicament. But even if Freddy ended up giving him over to the security lady, he could find his way around her again. He was sure of it. He would be fine. Just fine. Thus ends today's program of Into the Night. Will Gregory make it out of Freddy Fazbear making Pizza Plex alive with the help of Glamrock Freddy? What will happen if the security guard catches him? And is there an explanation for the animatronic's weird behavior? All this and more in the next episode of Into the Night. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to stay updated, please consider subscribing, following, or sharing this podcast. It truly helps us broaden our reach. Consider following us on our Twitter at Fazbear Podcast link will be in the description. I'd also like to make a quick update for those who don't follow us on our Twitter. For starters, something you may have noticed in the beginning is that we have since shifted creator support platforms. Our Buy Me a Coffee page has closed, and in its place we are launching our very own Patreon account. 
For those who support the show through our Patreon, you will gain early access to new episodes, as well as an ad-free experience. In addition to that, you will also get benefits to our brand new Discord server, where fans of Into the Night and Final Fantasy Fridays, well, we will mainly post memes, but we will also discuss Final Fantasy Fridays lore in a civilized and dignified manner like proper gentlemen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a tough way to read. So if you enjoyed the show, please consider helping us out by supporting us on our Patreon. We truly appreciate any love and support you can send our way. And join our Discord server to become part of our growing Into the Night community. Links will be in the description of the episode. With all that said, I have been your host, Nick. And I would like to thank you all once again for listening. Have a good night. And drive home safe.